the themes to my talk. Uh, one is uh, I want to give an introduction, a uh, rather minimalistic introduction to the subject of extrema local systems. Um, which I think is interesting in its own right from several different points of view. And then I want to tell you about my point of view, uh, why I'm interested in this, and so my motivation here, perhaps a longer term uh, goal, um, which comes from the classification <coughs> of final manifolds, particularly in uh, four dimensions. So we all know from Iskotsky and then Morimukai uh, that there are 105 deformation families of uh, uh, final threefolds, smooth final threefolds. And I wonder, you know, one of the things I wonder is how many families are there of final fourfolds? You know, what's kind of the ballpark figure, you know, 10,000 families, 100,000 families, maybe a million families, okay? I don't know. So the plan uh, for the talk is uh, like this. I will talk about extremo local systems. And uh, that's really the, the central theme of the talk. And the way these things arise naturally in geometry, so one of these ways is, is from Laura polynomials. And um, the other way is uh, from Fano manifolds and their quantum cohology. And then uh, I will talk about um, mirror symmetry and uh, the perspective on classification of final manifolds that comes <coughs> from it. So roughly speaking, uh, these have to do with one here, and these have to do with two. I should say uh, this is not even work in progress. This is uh, this is more like a research grant application. Exactly, research grant application. Uh, so this is a program for. Um, with, uh, which is joint <coughs> with uh, a number of people, and here are some of them, uh, Tom Coates, uh, Sergei Galkin, uh, Vasily Golshev, and uh, Alexander Kas Kapchik. Let me start with uh, extremal local systems.
here uh, V is a local system on P1 <laughs> minus uh, finitely many points. S is a finite set, the uh, singular set of the local system. So <coughs> this is just a representation. Uh, v is just a representation of the fundamental group of P1 minus S uh, with some base point X into Q to the R. So I'm talking about a uh, local system of finite dimensional <coughs> Q vector spaces. Local system is just a local free sheaf uh, in the Ital analytic topology. The uh, key invariant of a local system for me today is the ramification of V. So the ramification of V is defined to be the sum over the singular set of dimension of Vx modulo a local monodromy invariance at S. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, here's a picture of P1. Uh, here is my finest set S, and uh, uh, well, you have not yet defined what is V X. Uh, yeah, X is a base point in P one. Uh, uh, oh, X. Uh, oh, okay. So in in, in S is oh, S. Okay, sorry. So V X is the fiber at the point X, and uh, uh, if I imagine a loop. Uh, going around uh, a singular point S, then there will be a monodromy transformation mm -hmm. attached to that loop. And I'm just taking, it's only defined up, up to conjugation, but uh, then the dimension of these things is invariant. Okay. <coughs> So, sorry. What's the meaning of this point security? Well, local systems. Otherwise, there is no local system on P one. It's simply connected. But but are you talking <coughs> about ordinary ordinary singularities or something? No, I'm not. Not, not really bad singularities. Okay, so I, I will comment in so. The answer to that is as follows. Of course, I'm not interested just in any local system. I'm interested in local systems of geometric origin. So my local system always supports the variation of hot structure. So monodromic quasi-unipotent okay. and so on and so on. Yeah. Uh, there is a polarization, which is symplectic orthogonal. I'm not, there are lots of other things that I'm not saying. So do these guys correspond to exceptional connection? So there is a, let me just say, uh, there's an Euler formula uh, for cohomology with values in local system. And um, it says that the ramification of the local system V equals twice the rank of V. minus chi, the topological Euler number on P1 of J <coughs> star of V. So here J is the inclusion 
of this thing. The 2 there is really 2 minus 2g. If I was on a curve of genus g, I would have 2 minus 2g, but I am on p1, so that's not there. So if you like the key definition here, uh, which is due to uh, Vasily Goloshev, is the following. I say that V is extremal if uh, V is irreducible, it's not trivial, And uh, the ramification of V e is twice the rank of V. E. <coughs> okay? The logic of this definition is by the other formula, if V is irreducible and non trivial, then h0 equals 0, h2 equals 0, so chi equal h1. <coughs> and so ramification is 2 rank plus h1. So the case with the ramification is twice the rank is the case with the ramification is as small as possible. OK? So this is completely natural uh, so condition, I, I, even I, I, from a topological point. I repeat, I mean, this condition is that chi is, is zero. Correct. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so? And so, when I, ask, when I say irreducible and non-trivial, uh, H0 equals H2 H0 equals is, zero. H0 is zero. And but also H2 because of some Poincaré duality. Okay. 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 So, so for irreducible and non-trivial, then the ramification is always larger so than or H equal. All HIL are trivial then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <coughs> so let me just make a couple of comments. Uh, one is I only really care about local system of geometric origin. All my local systems. Uh, uh, support the variation of hard structure, so there is more structure they're not telling me about. Uh, and you know, the the theme, uh, the, the the idea here is we want to look at the various ways that 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 one of these things arise naturally in geometry. And because there are many such ways, I hope to convince you that extremal local systems are an interesting topic worth a study in its own right. <coughs> so next time I tell you something about low ramp polynomials. just a regular morphism, a regular map, uh, from C star to the N to C. And uh, out of a Laurent polynomial, I can form the principal period, which is uh, this integral, pi of t, uh, is the, uh, well, it's nicer if I put 1 over 2 pi i uh, to the n, uh, and then I take the integral uh, over a product of circles, of 1 over 1 minus tf uh, times dx1 over x1, dxn over xn. 
So here, x1 and xn are coordinates on this uh, cisstor to the A. <coughs> So one can calculate this period with the residue theorem as a power series expansion in T, and that comes out as some power series in T, uh, where the coefficients are easy to understand. Uh, Cm is the coefficient of 1 in f to the m. <clears throat> okay? So the fact is that there exists a polynomial differential operator, LF, and so it has integer coefficients, and it's a polynomial in T and D, where D is T, D by DT. Uh, such that LF times the period equals zero. In other words, the period, the principal period, always satisfies, um, you know, it's pure nonsense what I said. This is a complex Laurent polynomial, so LF has complex coefficients. Actually, let me retract that. It, it does have an integer. It's very good to be constantly assailed by self doubt when giving a lecture. Um, in any case, uh, the period satisfies a polynomial differential operator. <coughs> And I'm going to say that uh, the polynomial f is extremal if the local system of solutions of this differential operator is extremal. <coughs> No, no, given a Laurent polynomial, it depends on f. Sorry, yeah, it depends on f. So you're just doing f to the n for all for all different values of f, right? And you're pulling out the coefficient of of uh, one over x one, x two, x three. That's the only thing you're doing. Yes. But uh, there's actually no reason why that should be integral. Uh, they are integral because. Uh, um, So if we're, if we're talking about the powers of f, then the, it makes sense to have integers. But at the moment, we're just having the coefficients of f. f has arbitrary coefficients. So now if your f is a variation of other structures or something, then quite probably it does have <coughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why then I changed my mind again about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, f is extremal if the solution to the what is the solution? If I have differential operator, you mean the I, I look at the differential okay. equation, yeah. L f times something equals zero, and the the solutions of differential equations form form a local system, and I want this local system to be an extremal local. System. 
So, yeah, so, you know, if I have a D module, then there is the solution. So what would be the function points? Yes. Sorry? Sorry? So what would be the function points? Yeah, and cannot predict in advance. They are the place where the function f, they, they are, okay, they typically, they, they typically, well, what is true is that the set s so the, the main is point contained in the set of critical values of f. Yeah, but why does it uh, extend, why is it the metamorphic? I mean, why it, does it have only a finite number of... Uh, Critical points. It doesn't. The point is, uh, if you if you allow me, I will yeah, just say one put, relevant thing. You must put some geometric objects to prove that it has a finite number of critical points. We're not interested in case you know this is not an anthropic principle. <laughs> Every <laughs> function has a finite number of critical points. So, so yeah, we have a function. Yeah, f is a holomorphic function. Yeah, f is a holomorphic function system. Yeah, holomorphic function has a finite number of critical points. Power, entire power series, not. This is a polynomial. What is a polynomial? F is a polynomial. F is a polynomial, but not uh, pi. But, but uh, the singularities of L F. <laughs> are among the critical uh, values of f. Okay. And if you, instead of asking questions before I say the next thing, you just wait me until I say it, then you wouldn't have to ask this question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so for those who know, let me just make this remark then, so perhaps people will start relaxing. You know, for those who know, this local system sol of LF is a direct summand of uh, this thing here, gr WN minus 1 of RN minus 1 F lower shriek of Q C star to the N. Okay? So this is uh, the local system of compactly supported middle dimensional cohomology of the fibers of F. It carries a variation of mixed structure. And here, however, I'm taking a particular weight of it. So this is a pure variation of hot structure. And that thing is a direct sum. <laughs> so, uh, so one of the messages is, I think, uh, extreme and the are interesting in their own right. Um, and uh, let me try to say intuitively what it means for a Laurent polynomial to be extreme, okay? So um, the thing to remember, <coughs> to think about, are these uh, Berville sur surfaces. So these are rational elliptic surfaces. with um, four singular fibers. Okay. In general, a Russian elliptic surface, everybody knows, yeah, will have 12 singular fibers. Semi-stable. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't, I'm not 100% yeah, sure. Yes, perhaps they have to be semi-stable. I, I, I don't think that's terribly important for, from, from my point of view. But they, they, what's, the thing is that an elliptic surface has 12 singular fibers in general. 
but it is possible for, and so then the, the, the ramification will be, see here I have a rank two, I'm looking at H1, I have a rank two local system with 12 singular fibers. So the ramific remember extremum is that the ramification is twice the rank. So in general, the ramification is 12, but where it has, but it's possible for it to for the for the singular fibers to collide, to the critical values to come together, until you have only four uh, singular fibers, and then four is twice the rank, two times two. So so that's the extremal case. The extremal case is when the critical values of the Laurent polynomial come together as much as possible. So these are somehow the maximally degenerate uh, Laurent polynomial. The Hess the Hesse pencil is the sorry the Hesse pencil. Yes, yes, it's, it's that's one, one example. One example. Uh, but we will but we'll classify the surfaces, and there are six of them. Unless are, you want four singular fibers of multiplicative type, so the thing that uh, yeah. yes, semi-stable, yes. otherwise. Yeah, it's not important. It's not terribly important, yeah. <coughs> so we will classify these things, and there are six of them. And uh, here, the notion of extremal or polynomial, although I'm looking at something which is more special, I'm not looking at all possible algebraic varieties. I'm just looking at Laurent polynomial. But uh, although being special, it gives a higher dimensional generalization analog of this uh, Bobillo condition. Uh, OK, so perhaps there, there is time to to give a quick example that's uh, really a bit simple-minded. Uh, I really like hard examples. I don't like simple examples. But I don't have the time here for talking about the hard examples. So f of x equals f of x y equal x plus y plus 1 over x y. And here, uh, the period pi of t is uh, uh, sum t to the 3n times 3n. The coefficient is 3n factorial divided by n factorial cube. And uh, Lf is the differential operator d squared minus 3u, 3d plus 1, 3d plus 2. Here, d is u d by du, and u is t cube, because the period is a function of t cube, and it's natural to express everything in terms of t cube. part of our program is uh, basically just find examples systematically. Why do you write LF with d squared and then there is another thing involving d squared? So it's Sorry? 
one usually writes the principal symbol and then the rest. Uh, yeah, so in this business, it is useful to write differential operators as uh, uh, polynomials in T with coefficients polynomials in D. Okay? That's, okay. that's the way uh, that's good uh, for doing these things. <coughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so there's this book of cats called uh, on, on um, hypergeometric differential equations. And basically, the hypergeometric case is where this is a point of degree 1 in t. Okay? That's the definition of hypergeometric. So for many, many purposes, uh, th this is the way you want to write down your uh, your differential operators. If you are an analyst, you are more interested in the principal symbol, and uh, algebraic geometers are a little less interested in principles. Yes. So. <coughs> so <coughs> We want to find examples systematically. So let me just give, uh, this looks a bit vague. Uh, I don't have the time to tell you even what we know about this. But so for instance, you could fix a polytope, uh, a lattice polytope, P, in, uh, in some lattice M tensor Q, and then find, uh, and then you could ask yourself uh, this question, find examples of extreme on Laurent polynomials F with Newton F equal P. Uh, or, uh, or you might want to do this. P is integral or? Is yes. It? Well, I want it to be uh, the P, P is a Newton polytope of uh, Laurent polynomial. So okay. it's the span oh, yes. of okay. some <coughs> integer. <coughs> and then you might want to do this uh, for uh, not just one polytope, but for a natural class of polytopes. And, uh, you know, the natural classes of polytopes are the polytopes that people have studied already. And um, uh, so, for instance, reflexive polytopes, and there are 4,319 4, reflexive uh, three-dimensional polytopes. And uh, the list that we really are interested in is the 4D reflexive polytopes. There are more than 473 million polynomials in 4D. Uh, this is uh, the work of uh, Maximilian Kreutzer. Um, the database itself, when properly indexed, for for uh, able to work with it, occupies about five terabytes. And uh, our computers have been working on regenerating the database for seven weeks now. Um, so we already know some ways of generating examples systematically, but perhaps uh, I don't need to tell you right now. On the abstract in the little booklet uh, you have, the, the, is the address of a blog, okay? So we have a research blog, and uh, there is uh, quite a lot of um, material there, many uh, 
tens of thousands so, so, of so, uh, so, extremal uh, Laurent Polygamy in 3D. Yes. So those Newton polygons, usually, you know, you have sort of 10, 10, 10 or 12 monomials in there. Yes. And they, so you're giving them coefficients. Yes. And then these depend, these give a hypersurface that depends on a map that depends on moduli. Yes. Right. And you're, so your extremal guys are going to be one point inside that 10-dimensional yes. ten, ten moduli. Yes. And uh, thank you for raising this. Because I meant to say, but I forgot. Uh, somehow, the idea is that in this space of uh, Laurent polynomials, the extremal ones are isolated points. Because remember, we're looking at the maximally degenerate ones. Uh, if the point was not isolated, then it could be deformed a bit. And presumably, then I can make a couple more critical values come together and then I can make the ramification even smaller. So the idea is that then, given a polytop, there is only a finite number of extremal around polynomials that have Newton F that polytop. And in many cases, this is true. You can check it by computer algebra. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of what I'm saying, we have a very practical point of view where we do we do many experiments by computer art. <coughs> um, anyway, uh, these are the Laurent polynomials. So finiteness is an expectation. An expectation. And it is definitely not true in complete generality. There are polytopes where there are no extremal Laurent polynomials. And there are polytopes where every polynomial is extremal. Okay. So, you know, uh, real life is always a little complicated. <coughs> the, the guy you have on the blackboard, x plus y plus 1 over x, y, doesn't have any logic. Indeed. So, uh, Indeed. If you, put, you can put lambda mu and Absolutely. whatever you like in, in front of those Absolutely. Terms. On the other hand, uh, there is a natural uh, torsion action yeah, yeah, of course, and of course. then uh, yeah. re global rescaling. So, in some sense, all the polynomials with that, with that Polytope as the Newton polytope are equivalent by all these <laughs> rescalings and changes of course. There are more interesting cases where not all polynomials are, are equivalent and still they're all extreme. Yeah, of course. <coughs> it, is, it is a subject indeed. Uh, it's, a, it's a subject of study. Uh, and I hope uh, people can be uh, persuaded to. Um, to look into it. So let me now talk about uh, the next uh, topic, which is Faro manifolds. So I will explain in the shortest possible way how extrema local systems arise from the quantum cohomology of Faro manifolds. So here, Xn is a Faro manifold of dimension complex dimension uh, n so um, m sub m sorry for uh, this but uh, it's consistent with it before this is the moduli space <coughs> of stable Maps, they're not very really stable morphisms from a curve of genus zero to X. By all means, think of gamma to be P1 if you want. If you don't know what stable is, it's also not important that genus is zero. And the degree of the map measured against the anti-canonical class of X, that's an ample divisor, uh, is M. OK? Because when it's KX is ample, this moduli space is a algebraic variety. It's a projective variety. So. 
there is a universal curve over this modular space. And the universal curve maps 2x. So let me call F sub M the evaluation map. And let me call Psi the Chern class, the first Chern class of the relative uh, canonical sheaf of the map of the morphism. Hi. <coughs> okay, so That's the simplest basic mo modular space of gen zero maps to X. Okay. I'm just looking at the simplest of, of the spaces that one looks at in the Grand Prix. Okay. Now, the quantum period is this power series here, uh, J of T. Uh, so let's sum Pm t to the m, where P sub m is the integral over the universal curve Um of psi to the m minus 2 times f upper star of the class of a point on x. And uh, I'm supposed to integrate not on um, but on the virtual class of um. So I'm pleased to uh, appreciate this. Uh, when, I, when I was uh, at home, I made the calculation of the virtual dimension of this space. And it all, uh, it all works out. <laughs> So that I expect this integral to be a number, a, a non-zero number. Mostly non-zero. And so the theory of quantum cohomology uh, <coughs> implies, among other things, that there exists a, a differential operator, a polynomial differential operator, in T and D which annihilates the quantum pair. Uh, uh, this M modular space is where it is connected. Yeah, yeah. So it contains some connected components, absolutely. But a finite number. But a finite number of them, absolutely. So the thing here that, um, OK, so this is a differential. So the thing here is that, uh, because I want to make a connection with what I said before, um, the fact is that the differential operators that arise uh, in the theory of modal polynomials, uh, they always have a regular singularities. That's a theorem of Deligne, okay? And um, the, the gauss meyer system has, has, has regular singularities. And, and uh, so it happens that these guys here, if you know quantum cohomology, always have one irregular singularity at infinity. And so this is not suitable for a direct comparison with what I was doing before. And so it's better to look at the regularized Uh, quantum period and that's just a Fourier Laplace transform of J J hat of T and in practice me it means that uh, every coefficient PM I multiply by M factorial okay so it's a very simple uh, transformation 
and then uh, the regularized quantum differential operator Qx hat times j hat of t equals zero. Okay. <coughs> so if you're an algebraic geometer, uh, you know, I'm old enough that uh, when, when I started out algebraic geometry, study algebraic geometry, we were told this mantra that uh, local systems in algebraic geometry always arise from the cohomology of a family of algebraic varieties. Now, uh, after Gram-Fulton theory, here is another way that local systems arise naturally in geometry. And uh, so if you take this idea on, on board, then uh, it's seriously, then you get into all sorts of dreams because, uh, you know, uh, when you think of uh, algebraic geometry and the differential equations that arise in algebraic geometry, then you go to variation of hot structures and you learn about motives and so on. And maybe then uh, here there is a parallel world of different kinds of motives. And uh, then uh, you can really start daydreaming. But I'm not going to go into that. Instead, I'm telling you that uh, here is an expectation which is verified in all examples that one can work out, which is the local system of solutions of the regularized quantum differential operator has very low ramification. So you may ask yourself, uh, what characterizes the local systems that arise from the quantum cohomology of finite manifolds? We don't know the answer to that, but uh, but it seems that uh, they always have very low ramification, and that this is a key property uh, of local systems that arise from quantum cohomology. So. I could be uh, slightly more precise, but I don't want to state this as a uh, conjecture, so I will just say perhaps, perhaps the following is true, that the, ram that the ramification of, of this local system here uh, is smaller than or equal than twice the rank of B plus the dimension of a piece of primitive cohomology of x. And that's the primitive cohomology of Hodge type <coughs> n over 2, n over 2 in x. So in particular, <coughs> for example, if dimension of x is odd, then we always expect this thing to be extreme. <clears throat> we know this to be true for three folds, and that's simply because given the 105 deformation families of finite three folds, we have computed all their quantum cohomologies, and then we have computed all the monodromies of all those differential equations by computer. And then <laughs> by just you know visual inspection, we, we can see that the ramification is always twice the rank. So it's true in dimension three. But it's not a theory. We don't know enough about quantum cohomology. Well, and, 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 and the fact that I don't know enough about quantum cohomology prove it doesn't mean anything, but uh, I talk to many people who know a lot more than I and they can't prove it to you. <coughs> okay. So finally, let me uh, talk about the last uh, subject. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit about mirror symmetry. 
and then uh, the particular perspective on classification of photomolecules that comes from. So, uh, well, I'm going to say that a Laurent polynomial F and a final manifold X are mirror uh, dual, are in mirror correspondence if the period of F equals the regularized quantum period of X. Or equivalently, if uh, the differential operator LF, the Picard Fuchs operator for F, is uh, the regularized quantum differential operator. OK, so this is just a definition. Uh, this is the simplest. Uh, the, the most practical way I know to state uh, what the mirror correspondence actually is between final manifolds and Laurent polynomials. Uh, there's there's uh, very many points of view and many, many uh, things that one can say. Uh, <coughs> to me, um, there's still a lot to be done in terms of, un, of, of, uh, of experimenting, of just, just experimenting, to see how uh, properties of x are reflected in properties of f and the other way around. So how various kinds of invariance of x then uh, can be computed in terms of what kinds of invariance of f and vice versa. There, there's a, a lot to, to be discovered. OK, so uh, here's our. Uh, the second part of our program so program part two so remember that in part one we had constructed uh, many lists of extremal Laurent polynomials OK? And so let's imagine that the mirror correspondence really works. And then use part one, then, to sketch a classification. of the final manifolds. So but I mean you mean toric final manifolds? No. No. In uh, oh. I'll tell you something more about this. Uh, so the fact is that uh, here uh, there are many extrema Laurent polynomials that have the same period, okay? And so the, the really the unit of study here is the period. So so you, you have huge lists of extrema Laurent polynomials, and then you form the lists of their periods, and then the and then you consider and typically the first uh, you just look at the first five or six coefficients of the power series expansion of the period. Okay? So the idea is that, OK, let's, let's say, let's take six. Okay? The, those six coefficients of, of the period, <coughs> the first six coefficients, you think of it as a telephone number. Okay? 
and then you can use that phone number to telephone a final manifold. And, you know, maybe somebody answers, maybe not. And so you, answer, you, you ask your favorite question, are you ready? Are you ready for it? Exactly. So, so, in other words, you form these lists of period sequences, and then that's kind of the yellow pages for final manifolds. And uh, then you can hope to construct it. And, uh, so how good is your phone technology? Given Sorry? How good is your phone technology? Given an extreme alarm polynomial, can you sort of even can, can you construct the final manifold, which is? Well, um, let me try to answer that briefly. Uh, then I look at the polytope. I, I take one. I, I take the period sequence. I I, I pull out uh, from my computer databases the polytope, which is the Newton polytope, one of the Laurent polynomials that give me that period sequence. Okay. So that Newton polytope corresponds to a singular, Fabrizio, singular toric final variety. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the final manifold in question is a smoothing of that toric, well, that singular toric final variety. Okay. So if I can construct the smoothing, and then here Tom, Jerry, and you know what, you know, are useful methods to do that, it, then, th then uh, and if I then can, uh, then um, that period sequence is also the quantum period of that. Of that so the moment you can definitely go from extremal around polynomial to this, to this degeneration, yeah. or toric degeneration of what you hope to be. Yeah, degeneration, not toric degeneration. Toric degenerate object, yes. Is it obvious that, uh, the, that in the degeneration you have the quantum differential operator is preserved? It is not preserved. It is not the quantum differential operator of the degenerate toric thing. It, it is the quantum differential operator of the smooth thing. Smoothing of it. Yes, but uh, it's also possible, and it happens, that on the same polytope there are several extremal around polynomials. That means that, that the genetic object can be smoothed in different ways. And then, uh, you know, it, it happens. Very example. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. Yeah, you have two minutes. Yeah, okay. Um, so, but to, to, to finish that off, there is a lot of work to do in terms of now, give, now we know the period, we know the differential operator, what can we learn about X assuming it existed just from the differential operator? There's a whole science to be developed here. And we have some guesses and many conjectures and, and uh, things. <coughs> okay. So to conclude in two minutes, I will tell you uh, that as a proof of concept, we have demonstrated this in 3D. Okay. So that we can say in the grant application that uh, you know we have done this homework. And so this is what we did. And this is more or less published in the blog. And you have the address in the, uh, the booklet. So in, uh, in 3D, uh, there are 4,319 uh, reflexive three tops. And um, uh, we have a combinatorial rule to create a Laurent polynomials, and we call them Minkowski polynomials. I'm not telling you what these are, but there is such a notion of Minkowski polynomial. And then we generate all the Minkowski polynomials for all these uh, polytopes. And out of them, we found 165 uh, period sequences. So how many polynomials are there? Uh, something of the order of 10,000. 
but only 165 period sequences. Because often it happens that several polynomials are on the same polytope. And then out of these 165, 98 uh, uh, correspond to uh, families of final three folds from the uh, Morimukai and Liskovsky list. And the other 67, we don't have an interpretation, but we expect from the shape of the operator that these are orbifolds. So they ought to be Q final three folds. Okay, so it's a very interesting question to find Q final three folds that have those periods. Now, remember that I told you, you probably know, that there are 105 uh, final three folds, families of final three folds. Why do we only get 98 of them? We are missing seven families. And that's because we're looking at reflexive polytopes. These are final three folds with extremely low degree. And because of that, we do not expect, it, it doesn't, we do not expect to, to be able to find an extremal polynomial supported on a reflexive polytope that will reproduce their quantum polynomial. We know Laurent polynomials for these guys but they are not supported. The newt of f is not the reflexive part. Okay, I'll stop.